the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Since God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we'll continue with the psalm, which I will read on my own. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Christ, you entered once into the holy places by means of your own blood, securing an eternal redemption for us. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of your great humility and patience, and that we may be made partakers of your resurrection. Through you, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading for this Palm Sunday is from Isaiah in the 50th chapter. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. 
The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me, therefore I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. He is near who justifies me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near me. Surely the Lord God will help me. Who is he who will condemn me? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Philippians in the second chapter. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to St. John, the 12th chapter. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him, and that they had done these things to him. Therefore the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead, bore witness. For this reason the people also met him, because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the Gospel of our Lord.
grace and peace be to you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our text this morning is from verse 7 of our Old Testament reading. For the Lord God will help me, therefore I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. Dear fellow redeemed, Palm Sunday has always been kind of a strange Sunday. There is great sadness in Palm Sunday in the middle of great joy. The sadness is unseen and unfelt by everyone except Jesus. And the joy fills the people, but it proves to be empty because it's misguided. Their joy of the people does at first seem to be a joy born in faith. The crowds had gathered because they heard about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. The people who were at Bethany when Jesus raised Lazarus went to Jerusalem ahead of Jesus and told the city people there what Jesus did. I mean, Lazarus was a corpse that had started to decay. You've all smelled what a rotting corpse smells like. It's repulsive. Lazarus was like that. He wasn't just dead. He was rotting in the grave. And Jesus restored him to complete health. People heard of that miracle. And they believed that Jesus was a miracle worker, possibly even the Messiah that God had sent to rescue them. So they did for Jesus what people back then used to do for conquering heroes. They put branches of palm leaves in front of the animal he was riding so it didn't have to walk on the dirt. It was a statement of supreme respect and honor. Jesus was so great, he shouldn't even have to walk on the same ground as the rest of them. If only the world still respected Jesus like that. But it was a misguided respect. It was an honor based on a false sense of glory. Jesus was a fixer, a miracle worker, a solver of problems, a deliverer of their pains and woes. He was the guy who was going to make their lives happier and better. He would take away their struggles in this world. That's what they believe. Sadly, it's what a lot of people still believe about Jesus in our day and age. They believe that when you've got Jesus in your life, then things are going to be better. He can make you rich and happy and fill your lives with blessings. That's the false doctrine being taught in a lot of megachurches in our day. That's why people flock to them and fill them up. Because people are believing that Jesus is the answer to an easier, happier, more comfortable life. And it's an absolute lie. Palm Sunday should not have been a day of great joy over the glory of Jesus. It should have been a day of somber thanksgiving for what Jesus was coming to Jerusalem to do. Jesus was entering Jerusalem to die miserably in shame and disgrace. But in the shedding of his blood, humanity would find an ultimate reason to rejoice. His death would reconcile sinful humanity to God. People would be delivered from God's eternal judgment. They would be given God's eternal love. So it was the ultimate gift Jesus came to give. And it was lost on these people who were so focused on temporal, worldly glory. Now, we have the benefit of hindsight, of course, in our day. We can look back and see the truth that these people missed. We can see how there really is no special good life of ease and freedom from problems just because you have Jesus in your life. But there is certainly redemption and reconciliation with God. The people back then, they found out before too awful long, how misplaced their hope in glory was. They would watch their miracle worker be arrested, dragged through the streets in a bloody mess, and killed in front of their eyes. And the oppression they thought they were enduring in Jesus' day from the Romans was going to get a hundred times worse. 
Within 40 years, the Jews would be pushed into their nation's greatest tragedy as Roman armies would slaughter them by the thousands and raise Jerusalem to the ground. They would suffer at levels they never imagined. So for all of those who thought that God's love was about temporal peace and happiness, the reality of the world would force their faith to be crumbled in front of their eyes. This is directly applicable to our day. For all those who think Jesus is supposed to make them happier, more comfortable, richer, they're discovering now how empty that faith is. Sickness, disease, discomfort, financial loss, even death, has a way of showing us how unreal it is to believe in a Jesus who's going to make everything in this life better. Because suddenly life is a lot harder. But for those who look to Jesus as a savior from sin, as the one whose life, death, and resurrection brings us God's eternal grace, then what we are enduring in our day does not come at all as a shock to our faith. Jesus has never been a savior from suffering. He has always been a savior for us in the midst of our suffering. A savior of the cross, not from the cross. Because Jesus willingly rode into Jerusalem and made himself the offering our sins needed, we can now face all of our crosses with thankfulness knowing that even in tragedy, God still loves us. And God is always going to love us. We are washed by his grace. Suffering isn't going to change that. We are set apart from this world for eternal life by Christ's righteous offering. And that's a certainty that no suffering will take away. Palm Sunday helps us focus then on Jesus rightly by seeing past the glory to the cross and seeing what our Savior willingly embraced to rescue our souls from judgment. No, Jesus is not a Savior in just the glorious moments of this life. He is a Savior for us in our pain, in our loss, even in the midst of the sins that plague us and accuse us before God. He is a true Savior for all eternity. And he rode into Jerusalem humbly to die for us. Thanks be to Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right, we continue then with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, by your Spirit, you have gathered us as your church and promised that, where, that wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there are you in our midst. Do not allow stress or disaster to distract us from your true blessings. Grant us your saving grace and build us up in faith and love for you above all else. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, you have established the kingdom of the left to hold accountable all those who govern and in this, in this and every place. Guide our president and members of Congress, the governor of this state, and all who make 
administer and judge our laws, that they would serve nobly and wisely, give them strength needed to bring our world out of crisis and back to stability, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your grace is sufficient for all of our needs. Yet you do fill our lives with acts of care and compassion. We pray especially for those who are sick or suffering, for our shut-ins, for those who mourn, and for all others who struggle, that they may be well supplied by your grace in every time of need, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Lord, in these final days, protect your church against false teachings and help us to discern truth from error, that none may be led astray or lost from the fellowship of your Son. Look with kindness on all who are separated from the holy communion of your church, and comfort them with your promises, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray you send your blessings especially on our confirmands this year. Increase the faith of Lucas, Calvin, and Isaac, that they may remain true to you throughout their lives and be bold in their confession of your word to the world around them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Hear all of our prayers. Deliver and preserve us for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We continue then with our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>
services or trans, uh, transmitting them on, on the line so uh, just keep an eye for when those are going to be on and you can watch uh, watch throughout Monday, Thursday, Good Friday and Easter at 10 o'clock as well uh, and if you are watching and you would like communion during this holy week uh, there are 20 minute blocks available for you to come in and receive communion throughout holy week uh, and also I'm always happy to come if you would like me to in your home and bring you communion so have a blessed Easter. 